Well, I think that Crosby's impact on civil rights is something that was completely ignored. It's, it was certainly unknown to me when I started researching his life. I was actually quite stunned because, again, the, these are not things that he talked about. He didn't boast about these things, and nobody asked him about them. It's the same thing with Louis Armstrong. There were so many things that are truly fascinating about his career that no one ever asked him about. And uh, in Crosby's case, the fact that he was associated with great black musicians from the beginning of his career, uh, insisted on working with them on stage when he could. When he couldn't, he performed with them privately in jam sessions and basements in Harlem and so forth. On the air, when he did the Woodbury show, he had the Mills Brothers on um, alternating with the Boswell sisters, and he made a point that not only were the Mills Brothers going to be his guests, but he would occasionally do a song with them. That was a big deal then although it was hardly noticed because it was Bing, and everybody accepted pretty much what he did. Um, and then uh, the fact that uh, Louis Armstrong uh, you know, appeared in Pennies from Heaven and got star billing for a performance that lasts less than six or seven minutes, uh, that was a big thing. It created Armstrong's career in Hollywood. And uh, you know, he, he was a man of his time in a lot of ways. He was very conservative. He did not believe in interracial marriage. I know he was upset when Lenny Hayton married uh, Lena Horne, but he grew, uh, you know, like everyone else did. But even so, uh, he was far ahead of the curve in terms of professionally tolerated. His live and let live attitude was legendary in Hollywood. And it wasn't just towards people of color. Um, the way he treated women, uh, you know, a lot of the major people on his staff were women. Uh, the way he uh, acted politically. I mean, he may himself have become a conservative as he got older, but uh, he didn't, uh, you know, attempt to censor people in his office, as other mem people in his office did do. Uh, there's a famous story of a woman coming in with a JFK uh, pin in 1960 and being told by one of Bing's uh, siblings to take it off and Bing coming out and just really ragging on his brother. Uh, we don't tell people, you know, he said if she wants to wear an I Love Communism button, she can do that in this office. Um, and then gay people. My God, I, I, I interviewed so many people who were gay and uh, just remarked on how surprised they were. Because, you know, uh, in a certain area of show business, there was really never much notice. Nobody ever cared about it. Um, but Bing was just completely, you know, nonchalant about that. You didn't have to be in the closet around him. You didn't have to pretend that you were somebody else. He just uh, he accepted people for who they were. And I think that that part of his personality comes across in his singing and in his film persona and in radio. That's why people liked him. I mean, the thing about Bing that makes him unique, uh, well, you can't go beyond unique. Unique means one of a kind. There, there are no peers. Is the fact that his audience was old and young. It was never a kind of, you know, one generation against another. It was male and female. It was black and white. It was northern and southern. It was uh, rich and poor. It, he really unified people. We don't see that anymore, especially in culture, because the, even, in, you know, a, a typical high school kid, you know, choosing a band that you like is like choosing a political party or a religion um, because every, every, every group has a different kind of music that they want to be associated with, that they get their own personal persona from. And uh, Bing was the antithesis of that. He, he was just somebody that everybody could like.